Hi, welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. Please help us to keep bringing you our history uh, by uh, supporting us uh, through uh, by pressing your subscription button. Thank you. Now, according to Henry Louis Gates Jr. and other scholars, Africa's uh, golden age happened around the same period when Europe was going through its middle or dark ages, its, its, its poorest um, um, ages when it was um, when they had um, crop failure, um, suffered from diseases and, and all kinds of, uh, of poverty. Anyway, uh, so starting from around year 1000, between year 1000 and uh, 1600 uh, AD, Africa enjoyed a period of commercial expansion, wealth, prosperity, and the founding of powerful empires and the building of new cities. However, but be, before we... Uh, we get into more details about this period and the empires um, which emerged as a result of the, uh, the Golden Age. I want us to quickly look at Sub-Saharan Africa before the period known as Africa's Golden Age. Sub-Saharan Africa was unlike Europe, Asia, and uh, most of um, even North Africa, um, for that matter, in that it was extremely diversified. Before the Golden Age, communities were small and stateless. Um, a lot of them were stateless. Um, they were not unified under a, a, a single universal religion, empire, or state. Rather, communities tended to be organized around kinship and family obligations with no centra uh, centralized authority. That is, at the state level, there were no centralized, there. There were, in most places, there were no centralized authorities. As such, the administration or governing of societies did not take the form of full-time occupations that we now uh, know because communities were small and autonomous. In other words, you didn't have, like, senators or politicians or, or, or people who made their living out of you know, trying to administer communities because uh, communities were not centralized. Now, there were, so there were, and there were also no need, so I, I thought there were no need for large armies and no large scale political organizations. There were, however, some similarities among some various um, ethnic groups, and, and, uh, and scholars explain that. This may have resulted from several waves of migrations of the Bantu people. Now, Bantu is a, is a general term for hundreds of um, ethnic groups spread over most of sub-Saharan Africa. They can be found in West, Southern, um, Central, and Eastern Africa. Now, though they now speak different languages, According to the New World Encyclopedia, there are enough commonalities found in languages to lead linguists to classify them as belonging to a common language family. In many cases, they also have uh, underlying customs. And we've actually done um, an episode on uh, African languages. So um, please uh, look for it and, um, and watch it. To, to get more insight into the various um, language groups um, of, 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 uh, of Africa. And please give us a thumbs up if you like that video. Now, okay, so in, um, in, in like I was saying, in uh, many cases, um, there were some underlying uh, common uh, customs. But we we might also wonder why and how they got scattered throughout such a wide expanse of the continent and um, so and this has been the focus of a lot of uh, research and theories however the jury is still out you know on why they 
they spread across such a wide expanse of the of the continent. Yeah. It is believed, it is generally believed that the Bantus originated in West Africa and thousands of years ago um, they st then started uh, spreading. It is believed that uh, before their the major, what is uh, called, uh, uh, believed to be the major Bantu disperser, the southern half of the continent was populated by Khoisan speaking people. Now, after the dispersal or the spreading of the highly resourceful and adaptable Bantus, many of the communities of South Africa came under the rule of the Bantu people. They also began to trade, the Bantus also began to trade with, a, uh, with Europeans who had more than just trade in mind, as we all know. Now, the Europeans were, of course, more focused on colonizing Africa. They were not only wily, but they had guns. And so they succeeded in forcing the Bantu populations to move wherever, uh, in, in most of the places where they decided to colonize. Now, the New World Encyclopedia also asserts that um, although during the transatlantic slave trade, people from all over the coastal regions of uh, West Africa were captured and transported uh, to North America and the, and the Caribbean, the Bantu people were among the most numerous. So the majority of the people who crossed, uh, who were forcibly were, uh, captured and forcibly taken um, away from Africa as slaves were actually uh, Bantu people. This also indicates how Bantu Africans have impacted the landscape and culture of the New World, uh, which um, had enslaved them. I think it would be interesting to try and track the percentage of people of Bantu ancestry through things like uh, DNA testing. Now, um, as I've also said before, as I've said before, the root language of the Bantus created uh, some commonalities. And this can be found in the form of vocabularies around uh, across African languages and, uh, and dialects. These commonalities uh, must have allowed some mutual understandings among various Bantu groups. Um, for instance, most had similarities in their belief system. Um, they were mostly animists, uh, believing in a world controlled by spiritual forces and gods. Now, these forces were often mediated through uh, specialists who prescribed rituals, uh, sacrifices, and um, or some other form of religious practice to affect individual or communal life and events. Um, these beliefs were the bedrock of, uh, of their ethics, worldview, and, uh, and the workings of the elements of, uh, of the universe. universe. In other words, their belief system was also tied to their philosophy, their worldviews, you know. So in, in most instances, there was some level of reverence uh, for the dead uh, ancestors, um, who were sometimes uh, worshipped as the first settlers of the land, who could, who they now believe to influence things like rainfall, harvest, and fertility. Now, to these traditional um, communities, land often represented more than just a source of economic wealth. They had a spiritual connection to the land, uh, and uh, this connection um, also made them respectful of the land. So that um, um, so all this noise today about um, the ecosystem and things like that, um, the Africans, you know, had a relationship to the earth, you know, that was so sacred that prevented them from abusing it. Now, I have digressed so much here in order to underscore the fact that regarding um, economic history, Northern Africa became very quickly integrated with the Mediterranean and Arab-speaking worlds uh, through trade, early waves of intercontinental migration, and conquest. 
So in this regard, the sub-Saharan areas were different. Their economics were primarily local and, uh, and regional. And as such, it would be wrong to generalize about North Africa and the sub and, uh, sub-Saharan Africa. This is also not an attempt to generalize about the whole of uh, sub-Saharan Africa. Anyway, we will continue um, next time. Uh, so please um, help us to keep bringing you um, our history by subscribing, sharing our videos, giving us a thumbs up, and liking us. Thank you.